through the streaming. It's an honor for me to be here in this room. About 20 years ago, I was here on this stage uh, and uh, in order to, to graduate uh, from journalism. And I didn't know that, that I would be here. I didn't know that I would be here again doing a presentation in these years. Cyber camp. We're going to talk about sexting, extortion, and grooming, three issues that are very interesting and that um, have been mentioned in the our, in the last presentation that has taken place here. So, well, Sherzade already introduced my introduced me. So, thank you very much. I also would like to. Uh, Say to you that I have a Twitter account at uh, Yokomu in, uh, in case you want to uh, talk to me. Uh, I'm not going to say anything else about this slide. I'm going to go straight to the three issues I'm going to discuss here uh, this evening sexting, extortion, and grooming. Sometimes we get confused with these three terms and people don't really know sometimes what they mean. So let's start with what sexting is. What are we talking about when we're talking about sexting? Sexting means publishing or spreading images or videos that have some sexual content and that have been recorded voluntarily by the person that appears in this video. Why do I say that it is something volunteer? We must insist on that because sometimes when we are talking about sexting, we think that it is a crime, but sexting is not a crime. It's a practice that's happening more and more among adults and teenagers. We have to talk especially about teenagers because sometimes they may not be aware of the risks involved to that. Um, it's supposed that we as adults already know that sexting is a practice of risk, but it is not a crime. It can end up in a crime very easily, but it is not a crime in itself. So it means what I've said, publishing or spreading images or videos with sexual content through different technological technology devices and that have been made by the sender voluntarily. And they have been taken, as I've said, by one person or a person and someone else. And uh, these images are recorded voluntarily. If someone is pressuring that person so that he or she takes a picture or records a video, or if this person... Uh, is asked about this type of images as a proof or of love or friendship, then it is not as volunteer. Sexting means that I want to share with you a picture of a video of intimate and sexual content of myself because I want to. However, Sexting without control is a practice of risk and not just for minors, because even though adults may be more aware of that, sexting uh, between teenagers is not as well thought and it is a practice of risk. This sentence, this sentence that says, do not leave for tomorrow the nudes that you can send today is a mistake, because in the end, these images is may be spread outside uh, the circle of uh, trustworthy, uh, the, the circle of trust, and uh, it is true that manners are especially sensitive to that because they find many pictures, many sentences such as this one, and it is a practice of uh, risk and it is a mistake to think that we, you should send this type of pictures with, without taking any type of measures. So, well, I talk a lot to teenagers, to minors about this issue. I do a lot of presentation in schools, high schools, and we cannot ignore that sexting is something that is happening between minors very frequently. We cannot ignore that reality. We cannot close our eyes and say, okay, my child is not going to send that pictures, that videos, because they can do it. So first we have to explain to them the risks in that involve this practice. And we can say also, okay, sometimes when you're asked this type of images, you can use your sense of humor and you can send this type of pictures. Like the first picture, picture, he told me to send a um, picture without clothes and I did it or send me something hot and you send the picture at the bottom left. 
or you play with all the parts of the body that may appear something else or you can send a picture with a toilet suit instead of swimming suit so you can use your sense of humor in order to give an answer to this type of request the fact is not sending intimate pictures of yourself of yourself but anyway if you are going to send this type of pictures you have to take many measures this is a campaign that was launched in Latin America that is quite appropriate because here, as you can see, if you want to share this type of pictures, you should cover at least your face. But we should also address many other issues. If we as adults want to take this type of pictures or record this type of videos in order to enjoy our intimacy, our body, etc. We also should take these uh, measures, but especially minors and teenagers should take a lot of measures. As many measures, uh, you have to take so many measures that sometimes you are going maybe to end up um, uh, not wanting to send these type of pictures anymore. But, well, in case I want to send this type of pictures, you always have to send them to to a person that you really trust. Because otherwise, this person can send these pictures to other people and this ends up being as a network. And, in fact, there are this, some of these pictures are openly posted in a social media. So, in case you want to do sexting, the person... He, the, uh, needs to be someone you can trust and in fact this person after uh, this person after receiving these pictures after using the pictures for personal enjoyment should erase should delete these pictures the re recipient should delete these pictures and we should trust this person this uh, rem uh, this remitter this recipient to uh, delete these pictures but anyway, we should take some measures, even though I'm sending this picture to a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, in case this, relations, this relation uh, finishes at some point. We have to hide our face, as we've seen in the previous campaign, but beside the face, unless you're not showing your face, it's and the risk is mitigated if you cover your if you are covering your face you need to take further measures because if you are not showing your face but you are having a tattoo or a birthmark that may identify you then people are going to know that it is you even though you are hiding your face so if you want to practice sexting, you have to do it in a secure way because it is a prevention method, but it is not uh, something unfailable. And um, also you have to take care of, of the background because even if you are hiding your face, your tattoo, your birthmark, but you can see your pictures, pictures of yourself or, or, or your family in your room, in your bedroom, in your living room. I mean, if you are publishing pictures uh, whose, which background is also recognizable, you, have, you are going to be identified too. So this is something else that you need to consider. You need to avoid using personal objects, for example, uh, Ne necklace or um, a belt or something that identifies that is very uh, uh, linked to you you should also you should also avoid that so because in case this image goes viral the risk is going to be reduced something else that we forget is that behind every um, image we have a lot of meta metadata and if, if we taken a lot of measures but we forget to delete the metadata uh, we are going to be giving a lot of information for example if we have geolocalization of the video or image when we are taking it even if I'm covering my face, my birth makes etc. People are going to know that I'm taking the picture, this picture, 
in my house. I'm, people are going to know when I've taken this picture, uh, when I've taken it, at what time. So how to delete this metadata? Well, uh, this is a screenshot, um, but this can be used not just for images or videos, also in a PDF, etc. Every time we send out any type of uh, file, we need to delete metadata. So this is a screenshot about of how you can do it in uh, your Windows operating system. So in every, uh, so we should delete the location tags, and sometimes or normally it is um, enabled by default. If we are taking today a, a picture or or a video in uh, CyberCamp, it may be great, but it may give a lot of information to people that can extract this metadata. So when we are sending an intimate video or image, every uh, measure that we can take is uh, positive. And there are many tools that we can use in order to delete this metadata. Because same thing, there are tools to delete metadata. There are a lot of tools to be able to see this metadata. So there are many things, many measures to take. And why have we been adding all this or putting all these measures together? Because when we are sending, when we are doing voluntary sexting, when you are sending intimate pictures because you want to in a voluntary way, you can also suffer from sextortion. And problems here are greater. And this is already a crime. Sexting, as I said before, is not a crime. It's a more and more frequent practice, but you have to do it taking into account different things. It would be great not for people not to be sending these pictures, but you cannot avoid, you cannot forbid anyone from taking these pictures. You can just recommend people to do it as safest as possible. But from sexting to sextortion, there is just a line. So once the, these images have been sent, the person that has received these pictures can, ex can do this extortion to the emitter. So if I received a picture of a video, or if I've taken a picture or a video with someone, we done that because we wanted to and for our personal enjoyment. If the person that received this picture of video because this person has received, because I wanted to send that picture to that uh, person, that's okay. But if someone has received a picture and I didn't consent on that person to receiving that picture through a laptop, um, phone, etc., or even showing that picture to someone that I didn't consent to for 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 him to see this picture, then this is already a crime. Or if this person decided to publish the picture that I sent to him or to her in a social network or in a website or whatever, just showing a this picture is a crime because I've been authorized by someone to watch a picture or a video, but just me, when I'm showing this picture or video, this is going to be a crime uh, that could end up in an imprisonment between three months and a year or fines of six to 12 months. And this is not just uh, sexual images, but also if I'm recording a fight uh, or I, I'm recording someone humiliating another person, this is also a crime included under this article. But it's true that technology always goes um, beyond the regulatory framework. However, we may find similar articles that could cover the, the, these new type of crimes that are arising. So it's not, not just sexual video are covered, videos are covered by this article, but also other type of humiliating videos. So sexting may end up very easily in uh, this type of crime just if someone decides to show the image or video that this person has been sent to. And we find news, more and more news about this. And some people that are receiving this type of content have end up, ended up committing a crime with or without knowing it because they've published, spread it, sending 
send um, private images or videos or, or uh, a friend, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a partner or a, a stranger that uh, has sent you a picture. So there are many, many people suffering from this. I've got here many headlines to show you that it is a real problem that is happening every day. And what's dangerous is that we are finding headlines that say that this is happening to minors, to teenagers, too. So we are doing something wrong. So we never think that our uh, daughter and, uh, and sons are taking these type of pictures or videos, but they are doing so and they are using these sexting frequently and minors that are receiving these pictures and videos and are showing them, they are committing a crime because they are violating rights of privacy, of intimacy, etc. And besides doing a crime when showing these images, they are also sharing a childhood pornography. Because if we're talking about minors, and if you are showing a picture of a video or a video of a minor, you are showing childhood pornography. Child pornography, and the crime gets bigger. So we have to insist on this. This is something I always repeat, and I want to explain very well in all my presentations. This happens, and teenagers ask a lot of questions about this. You cannot even imagine how uh, frequent this is done. So we were going to talk about sexting and sextortion. So we've explain what sexting is and the crimes that may be involved. But what is extortion? So extortion means that the images and videos that I've sent uh, consciously or unconsciously are used in order to blackmail and extortion this person, the person that appears in the video or in the images. So I can extortion the victim by saying that, extort the victim by saying that um, I'm going to spread the pictures or the videos. So maybe if so, these images may have uh, taken voluntarily or non-voluntarily. There are different types of extortion, uh, but there are two main categories that are seen quite frequently. One is uh, the category of uh, porn, porn revenge or unconsented pornography. Here we are talking about um, having an emotional bond between the victim and the person that is blackmailing the victim. So, well, for example, an ex-partner or uh, any type of you can, the victim and the uh, criminal may have had all types of uh, emotional relationship. And, uh, for example, in this case, he, the victim sent a picture or a video to a partner. And the partner may say, I want more. If you don't send me more, I will uh, publish these um, pictures. Or when they, this is not the partner, it is the ex-partner who says, either you um, are back with me or I will publish this. Or now that you are not my girlfriend or boyfriend anymore, I'm going to show these images, this video to everyone. And uh, we need to be aware of that because even though I can trust someone at some point and I, I want to decide to send these pictures, this trust may break at any point and we have to be very careful. Even though there are uh, victims of both sexes regarding porn revenge, mostly the victims are women, women and girls. Then the other category of sextortion is economic sextortion. So through the images that someone has obtained, uh, most of in of the cases, and the, these images have been taken without consent of the victim, and uh, there are some uh, 
some criminals that try to use these uh, images in order to obtain money. So I'm asked, the victim is asked for an amount of money in order not to publish these images. And on, behind these criminals, we may find mafias such as the ones that are uh, doing uh, ransomware to you may have a ransomware business, but you can also have some sextortion business too. So, in regarding economic sextortion, victims are men and women, but mostly men. So, besides sending instant message, messages or using um, apps uh, to meet people, these mafias also act through LinkedIn, uh, the most well-known professional uh, social media, and Facebook, uh, social network used with your families and friends. Because many people or these mafias send invitations to LinkedIn or Facebook with pictures of a, a good-looking person. And once they are your contact, sometimes they try to establish a relationship with the victim in order to gain trust. Uh, but most of the times they try to establish a, uh, a hot relation with the with the victim. And how are these victim, these criminals acting, which, as I've said, are ma mainly mafias from faraway countries that are um, difficult to try to trace. So they start a conversation through a private chat. They start uh, warming up the environment and they end up having a video conference conversation. Once that person is on Skype, in some cases, maybe you can have the on the other side the person that was in the picture. Although so, um, sometimes the person doesn't look like the person in the picture, and sometimes they even use other people that have been sextorted too. And uh, sometimes they don't even appear, but they record you maybe naked or doing other things. At, in five seconds, they cut the call and they start calling you. And they say, either you pay me or I'm going to tag your video. I'm going to upload this uh, video to YouTube and are going, I'm going to tag you in Facebook and your friends and family are going to see what you're doing or uh, maybe I can also tag you in LinkedIn or your pro professional reputation is going to be over. So how can you explain this? How can a, do a child ex explain a parent that this has happened or how a husband can explain a wife that this has happened? How uh, parents can explain uh, their children that this has explained? People don't want to share these type of stories because of shame and this ends up in a in an endless um, loop because when they pay once they are going to be requested for more and more money and this is a very serious problem I personally try to detect when this happens the most now for example in Christmas I'm sure that the number of victims are going is going to increase because people have more free time I have a YouTube channel and two years ago I did a program and, and really and talking about sextortion with different professionals and I explained what happens when someone uh, in the world suffers from sextortion people usually look for information in Google and many people end up watching my video and I usually receive many messages I receive messages every week but even though if I do not receive any messages. If you read the comments uh, in the video, you can see that victims talk to each other and they uh, try to know when um, the criminals are going to stop asking for money. Because, man, because many people ask me in, through, privately, but many people also ask questions publicly. They don't know what to do. The thing is that you have to report. You have to explain this to your family, your, to your friends. You cannot pay because pain means ending up, ending up in an endless cycle. 
de manera, eh, que uh, because here there is a crime. The crime of extortion is also a punishable crime. And again, there are many other articles that talk about the number of victims that are, there are all over the world. There are also um, email campaigns threatening you, saying that, um, I don't know, I've recorded you by doing something, by accessing um, some type of uh, websites. Some of them are a lie, but uh, sometimes maybe they are true and problems are serious and they end up uh, tragically. So this is why it is so important to insist on saying that taking this type of images or pictures is a risk practice that and that you may do you need to take a lot of pictures when you are doing that because you don't know what's going to happen and finally what's grooming grooming means that an adult is using all type of strategies to approach uh, underage people uh, gain their trust and once they this adult has gained their trust they end the and this adult ends up uh, harassing them uh, with uh, sexual intentions uh, in order to obtain uh, pedophilic material or to um, physically encounter this person. And, um, well, these are teenagers, underage people that are being victims or of adults and they want these um, minors to send this type of images that will end up in very uh, nasty websites, etc. And how do these adults try to gain the trust of these underage people? Well, most of the uh, times they fake they are minors. If I go on a social network or a chat, it's very easy to fake that I'm a minor. If I want to chase minors, I will use the websites uh, or the social media that minors are using. So uh, something else that they are doing is pretending to be photographers, saying that um, they that they are going to do a book for free, and this uh, photographer takes pictures that are that go beyond the normal pictures of a book, and sometimes these adults even offer gifts. Oh, so you're saying that your father or your mother is not going to give you a phone for your mobile phone? I will do it for you. How much? 10, 15 euros? Okay, you have the money, but in exchange, I want something from you. So we have to be careful with that. Because grooming is not a game. And uh, every measure we can take is uh, not enough. And we have to be careful. And as a society, we need to uh, pay attention to these type of behaviors because it is not a game. And there are many criminals with sexual intentions that are attacking minors all over the world. And the Spanish Agency of Data Protection has created a priority channel in order to require the, uh, the, 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 uh, that, that this sensitive content is deleted, um, humiliating pictures, uh, sexual images, etc. A few weeks ago, this priority channel was launched and uh, the victim can contact the Data Protection Spanish Agency in order to delete this uh, content and they usually act very fast. But we have to take into account that if these images are being spread through private groups, there are going to be many copies. But anyway, it's important to see that measures are being taken and people should know that there is this channel in order to report this type of actions or activities. And also it's important for people to know that the INCIBE launched a cybersecurity assistance phone, which has turned into the main cybersecurity uh, point of contact for minors, for teenagers, for companies, for family members, for, for teachers that need information about any issue related to cybersecurity or anyone that has suffered uh, sex extortion, ransomware, etc. Anyone can call to this uh, phone number, 900 that will turn into the 017 shortly.
eh, convergerán los And everyone will be able to access this claro, number. And if you are a victim of a cyber de crime, de you have to report de, it. We've de, talked de, about sextortion de, and we talked about grooming as cyber crimes. Because sexting, as we've said, it's not a crime, it's a voluntary thing. If we are a victim of a cyber crime, again, we have to report it. And we have to report it to the police. We have national police, we have the civil guard, we have to report to any of these uh, institutions. And, but, and we also need to know that there are many resources for this type of victims. So the image that won't go viral and won't cause problems is the image that is not taken. So let's avoid playing with fire in order to avoid having problems. Thank you very much. I think I ran out of time, so I don't know if I can ask questions. Well, Yolanda, thank you very much. Uh, there is no time for questions right now, but she is going to be here for a while, so you can ask her whatever you want to. Please, a big round of applause to Yolanda. So, well, as I was saying...